Nonprofits in Great Falls say they've seen less need from community members right now, despite many Montanans being hit hard by coronavirus. Plus, talks on a new COVID relief package continue in Washington, what might be in store for the next round of financial assistance. And later, two words you've no doubt heard by now, contact tracing, how it's helping health officials in Montana try to control the spread of the virus. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Thanks for spending your Saturday night with us. I'm Matt Holzaffel. Two men are dead following a two vehicle crash in Cascade County early this morning. It happened at near mile marker 123 on Highway 200, several miles southwest of Sims. Trooper Wade Palin of the Montana Highway Patrol says the crash was reported just before 3 a.m. Saturday. Palin said that the head-on crash killed both drivers. There were no passengers in either vehicle. According to Palin, both men were wearing seatbelts. He said that the investigation into whether alcohol and or speed were factors is ongoing. The names of the two men have not yet been released, but we will update you if we get more information. Now for your Saturday coronavirus update for Montana. Our map showing over 100 new cases reported since last night. That puts us at over 4,000 total confirmed cases for the state right now. Nearly 1,500 of those are currently active, but some good news right here. Our recoveries tally did increase by 100 since yesterday. The U.S. has now also surpassed 4.5 million total cases. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Montana has passed Maine in total cases. That puts the Treasure State at 46th out of the 50 states. Despite many families suffering financial hardships during the pandemic, need within the community has actually dropped. MTN's Lindsay Hyatt met with a few Great Falls nonprofits to find out why need has improved as financial times have worsened. President Trump returned from Florida Friday night just as unemployment benefits for up to 30 million Americans ran out with no immediate ex All right, sorry about that. Well, in other news, President Trump is signaling interest in extending some type of weekly economic lifeline to help millions of unemployed Americans. The softening of the White House and Republican positions follows weeks of opposition to offering what they described as a reward for people not to work and as negotiations resume today on another coronavirus leave package. The movement comes as Congress allowed that program that provides a $600 weekly supplement to unemployment benefits to expire overnight. Nicole Killian with CBS News is at the White House. President Trump returned from Florida Friday night just as unemployment benefits for up to 30 million Americans ran out with no immediate extension from Congress. The Democrats do not care about the people of our country. They don't want to do what you should be doing for the people of our country whether it's unemployment or anything else. President Trump pinned the blame on Democrats after the White House said it put several proposals on the table. We don't have shared values. That's just the way it is. So it's not bickering. It's standing our ground. Democrats want to keep the $600 weekly unemployment payment through next January. Republicans in the White House have offered a shorter term extension at a reduced rate. So we call on Capitol Hill to uh, get serious about their negotiations. The president is serious about the negotiations. We're willing to engage. The Senate adjourned for the weekend while the House canceled its August recess until a deal is reached on a broader coronavirus rescue package. This is going to be the greatest election disaster in history. Meantime, President Trump renewed his attacks on mail-in voting as concerns surface about the U.S. Postal Service, now overseen by Louis DeJoy, a Trump ally. CBS News has learned DeJoy forced cost-cutting measures leading to undelivered mail piling up at post offices across the country, fueling fears about the agency's ability to deliver ballots in time to be counted. We're putting in all the resources you can. We're not prepared for this. They're not prepared for an onslaught of millions of ballots pouring in. They're not prepared. They're not prepared. You watch. They're not going to announce anything on November 3rd. And President Trump also told reporters last night he plans to ban the popular mobile app TikTok in the U.S. through executive action. Though it's not clear yet how the president would ban the Chinese-made social media company from the U.S., or even if he has such authority, Mr. Trump said he might sign something as soon as today. Well, lots of sun this week, and our storm tracker weather team expects that to continue throughout the weekend. Russ Thomas joins us now. Russ? 
Hope you had a nice Saturday. It was a really pretty day. It was definitely hot out there across most of the state. We saw a lot of 90s. Now we're easing back up into the 70s and 80s. It's going to be a mild night again following a very hot day. As typically we see overnight lows in the 50s and 60s as opposed to dipping down in the 40s. 81 right now, Great Falls. 87 still mild in Helena, still warm in Helena. 82 degrees in Missoula and Kalispell. 80 in Bozeman. 79 degrees in Livingston. Wind has picked up just a little bit this evening, though nothing that's strong or stands out. Uh, strongest wind actually comes in Hatboro. Winds out of the east at 24. Bozeman, or I should say Jordan, looking at a wind of about 20 miles per hour to the east in Great Falls. 10 mile per hour wind and 17 in Helena. Satellite and radar image again. A couple lightning strikes up north right along the divide as you head toward Canada there. And then in southwest Montana. Now coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about that forecast as we head into your Sunday and beyond. There is a cool down on the way, a chance of storms as well. And again, we'll have more on that in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Russ. Well, the May and June Vintage Market in Helena hosted their first ever Midtown Bicycle Parade today. The parade consisted of bringing the community together to decorate their bikes. Then the parade began around the block to showcase the decorated bikes. The owner says she wanted to do this event to bring positivity in the pandemic. Create your own joy in a time that's maybe um, difficult and trying. Maybe just try to find the good and see, and see the good. Um, life can either be a grand adventure um, or or nothing so might as well live the adventure of it in Laurel this afternoon more than 200 veterans received free food from the nonprofit Montana Veterans Meat Locker organizers say they have never seen this much demand in the group's three and a half year history MTN's Mitch Laggy brings us the story of neighbors helping neighbors frozen meat was flying out of the trailer Saturday as volunteers with the Montana Veterans Meat Locker worked to distribute free food to any veteran or their family members that made the drive to Laurel. With the pandemic going on, we tried to establish it with having drive up style and we didn't anticipate this many people. This is over 2000 pounds in less than an hour and we've never done that before. And the turnout, the community involvement, the word of mouth has been just awesome. In its three and a half year history, the Montana Veterans Meat Locker has handed out 60,000 pounds of free meat to more than 5,000 veterans across Montana. Gerzinski said he's seen a higher demand this year after the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a really big pickup this year, especially with the price of beef and everything that it has been. But with the shortage of beef as well, we've had a real high demand, a lot of calls, and it's put us in extra overtime with it. And given that we can't meet all the needs, we're trying to get as many as we can and try to get as many people as we can as well. What started out from freezers in the family garage has now grown to include a freezer trailer that has traveled across the state from Kalispell to Glasgow. Hunters and ranchers donate their meat and the veterans meat locker pays for the processing. Veterans or their families just need to show proof of service to receive the food. And it's followed through through, I mean, these years. We have a lot of individuals that tell us that they really needed it this time. This was a pickup. If we didn't have this, they said that they didn't know where they would be. And this kind of just gave them that up to start, you know, get that leg up and continue to driving forward. In Laurel, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Organizers said the freezer will be wiped out after today's event, but you can keep an eye on the Veterans Meat Locker on Facebook to see when their next event will be held. If your name is Scott, well, it's your lucky day. I'm Keely Van Mittendorp, and I'll have this story from Great Falls next. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Welcome back. Well, despite many families suffering financial hardships during the pandemic, need within the community has actually dropped. MTN's Lindsay Hyatt met with a few Great Falls nonprofits to find out why need has improved as financial times have worsened. With jobs and money lost this year to the pandemic, you'd think Montanans would be in greater financial need now than ever. But according to nonprofit staff, Great Falls needs are not so great at all. With the governor's uh, directive to um, not evict people, we haven't seen as many coming seeking help. In fact, Executive Director Jim McCormick said the rescue mission has seen many families moving out. With some of the uh, subsidized housing available in Great Falls, we've actually moved out quite a few 
into permanent housing. So it's had the opposite effect. And general population counts for singles with the mission have remained much the same. And the men's shelter and the women's shelter has been maintaining status quo, so to speak, on any big influx or anything like that. Not only is mission occupancy lower, but communal giving is higher. This year, it's been phenomenal. I love how Great Falls and Central Montana has come together to help support us and keep us going. And the rescue mission isn't the only nonprofit experiencing less need. My neighbor and need users haven't been as needy either. I believe like right now we have maybe two needs on the My Neighbor Need website. We normally would have 10 or 12. Which founder Dave Snug attributes to a fear of contact while receiving aid. Those requests for Home, improve, home improvements, repairs, emergency, things like that are going away because nobody wants high touch. The small amount of need requests he has received are very specific. Ever since COVID came out, we've noticed that our need requests have varied. They become more laser focused. They seem to be focused on the immediate needs, such as emergency fuel, transportation to doctors like bus passes. With less needs submitted, the nonprofit is able to fulfill the needs they do receive even faster. Someone pulls up here and they're on E and they need gas to get to their, doc to their doctor. Those were here to fulfill like that. Request fulfillment is also made possible by the community, who has generously stepped up to support both nonprofits during this time. In Great Falls, Lindsay Hyatt, MTN News. Even as the U.S. hit a single-day record of new coronavirus cases this month, the CDC's latest statement calls for schools to reopen. But critics say there is a vague guidance for what happens if there's a school outbreak. Usher Qureshi has more on what parents need to know as they think about kids trying to go safely back to school. As states across the country weigh the risks of reopening schools this fall, the message from the White House has been loud and clear. Yeah, I would like to see the schools open, open 100%. Most doctors, educators, and psychologists agree that going back to school would be in the best interest of students. But what happens if just one student contracts the coronavirus? Would that force a shutdown? The CDC says no. Getting people to understand that the knee-jerk answer is not there's a single case in a school, that that then equals closing back down the school. Once you start getting into dozens or even more kids and teachers starting to get infected, it's going to be very hard to keep that school open. Dr. Ashish Jha is a professor of medicine and the director of Harvard University's Global Health Institute. We have to have really smart planning and we have to have a clear protocol for how to identify kids and, and teachers and staff who get infected and then what to do when we, when we identify them. And I just haven't seen that kind of clear protocol yet. Late last week, the CDC did issue new guidelines for school reopenings. They include encouraging social distancing, spacing out desks and requiring face coverings. But the guidance leaves it up to states, schools, and local health departments as to how to precisely handle an actual outbreak. What we have is patchworks not just within across states, but even within states, across communities. Uh, states are turning over the responsibility to individual communities and saying, you figure it out. Recommended strategies from the CDC's guidelines include immediately separating staff and children with COVID-19 symptoms, setting up safe transport for anyone who is sick to their home or to a healthcare facility, closing off areas used by a sick person, cleaning and disinfecting after 24 hours when possible, and immediately notifying health officials, staff, families, and anyone who may have had close contact with the infected person while maintaining confidentiality laws. Still, there is concern. A recent survey found 46% of Americans believe schools need major modifications to deal with the coronavirus pandemic, and another 31% think they shouldn't reopen for in-person learning at all. We can open schools safely, but key to that is making sure the level of community transmission is pretty low. So you don't have sort of raging wildfires in the community because it's going to be very hard to keep those fires out of the school. I'm Usher Qureshi reporting. In uncertain times, joy is blossoming in Great Falls thanks to one flower shop. MTN's Keely Van Middendorp has that story. Oh, I'm sorry to make you walk all the way down. The first thing many people see at Herman's Flowers in Great Falls is their sign displaying a special message. Who are you putting up today? I'm going to put Scott. Smith's family has owned and operated Herman's Flowers for over 100 years. She says that she's glad to continue a Great Falls staple while bringing new traditions of her own. 
We do have a lot of people who go by and constantly check for their names. Smith says she's glad a simple gesture started years ago. How many names have you put up over the years? Oh my goodness, I, <laughs> I don't know. Is bringing happiness and love to those needing some good news. Flowers do bring a lot of joy and happiness to people, especially now. From birthdays and anniversaries to special holidays, Good morning, Herman's Flowers. She's had requests for every name in the book. One that was spelled A, B, C, D, E. They said that the name was Absidy. She's even had some names that didn't make it on the board. Somebody came in and asked if they could get one for their dog, and we said no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it has to be a real person. She plans to continue her tradition of spreading positivity through petals. Are you ever thinking that you would charge for the service or? No, not at all. It has turned out to be really a good thing. In Great Falls, Keely Van Mittendorp, MTN News. Now we saw a couple storms pop up across southwest Montana today, but most of the state was hot. It was dry and it looks like more of the same for your Sunday with a cool down on the way for the week. We'll have your forecast coming up. Storm tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Russ Thomas. Welcome back on our Saturday evening. Hope you had a wonderful day. Weather wise, it was a good day. It was a hot day across the Treasure State. Most areas hit the 90s, a few only making it to the mid to upper 80s. Typical for this time of year. Great Falls looking at our sky this evening. Very nice out there. Again, a mostly clear to partly cloudy sky. Again, it's been hot all day long. Temperatures starting to come down just a little bit. Many spots sitting in the 70s and 80s right now as opposed to the 90s. We saw earlier in the day. Helena looking good as well. You can see partly cloudy sky this evening. Take a look at our current numbers. 81 in Great Falls, 76 degrees in uh, Lewistown. We've got 80 degrees in Helena, 80 in Livingston, 80 in Bozeman, 87 degrees in Helena, and 82 for both Kalispell and Missoula. Wind speeds not much of an impact. There are a couple locations around the state that are seeing winds in the mid-20s. Haver being one and actually about a 20 mile per hour wind out of the east in Jordan. Helena, you've got a wind out of southeast to 17. Great Falls out of the east at 10. Satellite radar looking around the northwest. By and large, things are very quiet. We do have a couple lightning strikes within the state, mainly southwest Montana, and a couple right up along the divide there. Again, looking closer, centered more on the state. We have a few clouds as well moving through. Uh, those clouds are going to clear out overnight, so we'll have a mostly clear start to our Sunday. Sunday heat, more of the same. I do think by the middle of the week, even Tuesday, we're going to see temperatures quite a bit cooler than what we've seen the last couple of days and what we're going to see tomorrow. And overall, it is going to be very dry, though we could see some thunderstorms Monday into early Tuesday in a few spots. Again, look for a clear sky this evening. Lows in the 50s to low 60s. So future track again for your Sunday looking good. High pressure really reestablishing itself over the area. That's going to drive those numbers up a little bit more sunshine tomorrow in most areas, whereas today we did see some cloud cover at times. That's going to help ramp those temperatures up as well. In fact, if we look at our highs. We've got 94 tomorrow for Great Falls. Also Helena 97 in Missoula tomorrow. 90 Butte, 92 Bozeman, 93 degrees in Ennis and 91 degrees in Cut Bank. Looking ahead as we move into your Monday again, Again, later in the day in the evening, I do think we'll have an opportunity for showers and thunderstorms to pop up across parts of the state that will go into Monday night and early Tuesday. We have a dry cold front that will move through. But again, with that, enough moisture scoured out, especially in the central part of the state to see some of that lightning, some of those storms develop. We've got a high 94 in Great Falls tomorrow, 94 sunshine, Helena, 92 have or a hot day all around with that sunshine. Seven day forecast for Great Falls. We go to Monday, Monday chances of storms pick up late in the day during the evening and overnight hours about a 40% chance again that high in the low 90s low 80s though on Tuesday mostly sunny temperatures pretty pleasant there then we jump to 83 on Wednesday another great day then we're getting hotter again Thursday high of 90 Friday 87 then back to 90 on Saturday notice other than the exception of late Monday through early Tuesday going to be dry each and every day it is going to be nice very summer like out there for sure Helena again we've got that 94 tomorrow 91 50 50 chance of storms late on Monday and then we bring that temperature down again on Tuesday 84 degrees mostly sunny Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday highs ranging from the mid to upper 90s. Could say an isolated shower on Thursday or Friday, but for the most part, it is going to be drying. And the hottest day is going to come tomorrow for your Sunday with a high of 94. 
All right, thanks, Tress. Well, after the break, we've got to look at something that is helping health officials in their attempt to control the spread of coronavirus. Here's MTN's Cody Boer to tell you more. To some, it's complicated. To others, it's become a part of everyday language, contact tracing. I'm Cody Boyer in Bozeman, how it's helping against the pandemic. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Welcome back. Double A baseball teams are scrambling today after news broke earlier that the Legion State Tournament is moving from Helena to Billings starting this coming Wednesday. Montana Legion Chairman Ron Edwards informed the Scarlets and Royals this afternoon of the change. Concern arose last week after Lewis and Clark County Health Department vetoed large softball and youth baseball tournaments in the area and Legion officials didn't want to face a last minute cancellation. The Billings program offered to host all games at Daler Park and were awarded the seven team tournament. The Scarlets and Royals haven't faced any COVID-19 issues during the regular season and are confident after hosting the annual Goldsmith Gallery Tournament last month. It does help and it helps that we know that we have the backing of um, our county health commissioners and we are aware of that and we know that we'll be good to go and um, we've hosted a tournament before so um, we kind of have that familiarity and then also the Royals did host the double A last year um, so our parents know what it takes to host the double A tournament now we're going to need a lot of volunteers and it's going to kind of be spur of the moment but um, we'll just do our best to get everything ready by Wednesday. And Swecker said there won't be any of the normal off-field events, no banquet, coaches meeting, or opening ceremonies, just games, all of them at Daler. Again, the tournament is slated to kick off Wednesday and run through Sunday. With climbing coronavirus numbers comes a staggering amount of work for public health officials across the state. One tool that we've heard about often, contact tracing. MTN's Cody Boyer has sat in on many of the Gallatin City County Board of Health meetings from the beginning, and he breaks down contact tracing in detail. They are two words that we've heard since the beginning of the pandemic, contact tracing, which usually starts off in the form of a phone call. If you've tested positive for COVID-19 or knew someone closely that did from a community health nurse. But according to the Gallatin City County Health Department, it can be a bit complicated. So how is it done? In the news, we're hearing a lot about contact tracing. Whether it be on the news, online, on social media, or just the talk of the town, contact tracing is part of the new normal, including for public health officials who have added more tracers, if you will, to their ranks to keep up. There normally are just three people who do this work, but since COVID-19, we've had to add on five more. And as health promotion specialists Jen McFarlane and Heather Demarest say, they are looking for more. While contact tracing might seem complex, both break it down into four parts, starting with a positive test, then that phone call. The interview begins with questions to determine when the person who tested positive first experience symptoms. The community health nurse will then ask who you've been around, who might have been exposed. Close contacts are not told who they were in contact with or how they were exposed to the virus. They are simply told that they were exposed and how to maintain necessary quarantine. All the while keeping personal health information confidential. The health department staff may contact management of that workplace, but only if they get permission of the person who tested positive. Demarest says close contacts are anyone who could have been around someone with a positive case for more than 15 minutes within six feet apart and within 48 hours from their first symptom and help is available. Case managers and volunteers are also available to deliver food and medications and any other essentials. They can connect that person with research resources. In Gallatin County, Cody Boyer, MTN News. All right, thank you, Cody. In Gallatin County, currently reporting 67 active cases of COVID-19. We're back with one final look at your forecast after this. Forecast for your Sunday again, another very hot day. We're getting used to this, right? 94 degrees in Great Falls tomorrow, 94 Helena, about 92 degrees with sunshine in Haver. Looking at the seven day forecast Monday, Monday night, early Tuesday could be active. We have a cold front coming through. Chances of storms will pick up, maybe even isolated severe storm. Then we go to 81, mostly sunny Tuesday, comfortable day. Same with Wednesday, 83 back in the low 90s on Thursday for Helena. We go 94 tomorrow. 91, 50% chance of storm, so it's a pretty high likelihood on late Monday through early Tuesday. And then we cool down 84 Tuesday. We've got 86 sunny on Wednesday, 89 on Thursday. Looking good right through next weekend. All right, thank you, Rustin. Thank you for watching. That's all we got. We will see you back here tomorrow. Good night, Montana.